So just some examples to give you an experiential intuitive taste of these different stages. So this is not necessarily what you realize, but this is the result of what you realize and how that shows up in the world. Does that make sense? Because you can realize something, but then it has an effect on your relational experience or how others could perceive you or what your function becomes, right? So the person, this person, shepherd, mirror, the person wants, the shepherd instead is inspired, or you could say desires. There's a true flow of inspiration, desire. The mirror detects benefit or relevance. So there's no desire, there's no wants, there's no needs. Um, you could say there is inspiration, but it does not belong to the one behind the mirror, which no longer is someone behind the mirror. It's complete emptiness, it's complete merger. So then the way you operate is no longer through wants or inspiration, but through detecting benefit or relevance. Now that can come with inspiration through the vehicles, through the lower vehicles, but that is witnessed by the mirror. The mirror is but a witness to that process. Where the person consumes, consumes experiences, try to uh, accumulate for itself, consumes relationships, when it's telling a story, it's all about itself, etc. It consumes. The shepherd creates or sources. It's more deliberate. It understands that it creates its own reality. It understands its interrelational nature to its environment. It understands that states of being create circumstances. Where the mirror simply allows. Where the person needs, the shepherd requests. The shepherd recognizes that there is inspiration to create something, for example, and thus then doesn't go and need and demand and will, but it requests. It understands the nature of timing, it trusts, and so it requ requests for what is required. It tunes to the frequency of what is desired, and then it calls it in, calls it forth. The mirror simply is, does not need nor requests, because when you are beyond the ego, altogether, even the big ego, you are that which is everything. You are, in your knowingness, you know that you are everything. And so there is no need and there is no requesting. What would you request for if you're everything? The person fears, and where the person fears, the shepherd trusts or has faith. And the mirror has already surrendered. And so the mirror knows or is, there is no sense of even trusting. Who is there to trust what? If you are all that is. There is no separation, you see. The shepherd still operates on an individual center, still has a center. The mirror is the result. Mirroring consciousness is the result of having no center, of having no ego, no individuality as who you are. Doesn't mean these states cannot arise. It's not this or that or that. There's usually a blend of these. And so depending on how much time and how depth, how, what the depth of your penetration into these higher levels is, you start to migrate more and more and more towards that right side of this chart. And more and more aspects of your expression start to migrate to the side of the chart. Where the person takes, you know, again, it's all about your body, it's all about you as the person. Even if you're giving, it's still about what you can get from it. So where the person takes, the shepherd gives. This is the birth of true generosity. You recognize truly that the other is one with you. Now it's not the total, it's not the total uh, resolution of identity. It still is, I am over here to some extent. I am this, you are that, but I know that ultimately we are one. And I feel you, I have empathy, I have compassion, I am interconnected. We are so highly connected that you could say we are one. There's an understanding of oneness, even though I'm still operating from a center. And so, I give, naturally, because you're myself. You're an extension of myself. You're not an other. You are the rest of myself. This is a portion of myself. That's the rest of myself. So why would you not extend to the rest of yourself? And the higher into the densities you go, the more and more tireless that service becomes, the more and more complete that generosity is. So person takes, shepherd gives, or is generous, and the mirror, again, simply is. Because you recognize that instead of giving, I recognize I am you. There's no difference. Does that make sense? Cool. Where the person does and feels like it's the doer, like it's this thinker inside of this control room in the brain that's operating the body, some kind of joystick. 
The shepherd has an expanded awareness of himself as eternal, as transcendent to just the body and this world. And so there's much more of a relaxation and a peacefulness and thus and an allowance. So the shepherd has the experience of flow much more than it has the experience of doership. Doership comes with a sense of separation. Flowing is a sense of being one, like the water in a bathtub or the water in the ocean, you know. You push water away on one side and it just navigates. It's one moving whole. Whereas the mirror doesn't even really flow, although it witnesses flow, but it simply witnesses slash is. Does that make sense again? The person is identified with the body. The shepherd, you could say, is identified at a soul level, or cosmic level, and the mirror is identified with all that is. Or if you go into eighth density or penetrate eighth density, you are identified with none that is, or rather that which nothing ever is, or whatever. But, <laughs> you know, that which is beyond existence altogether, outside of creation. You experience yourself as outside, free of, beyond creation altogether. So there is a, there is a perfection there. There is a com utter completion and indescribability there. There is the perfection of identity, yet the absence of any and all identity. It is an indescribable emptiness void, but it is free and it's perfect. It's perfect. It transcends any notions that you have. So the mirror identifies itself as all that is and or slash, depending on their level, um, beyond that. Where the person likes, as likes, and likes people because they are like me and I feel comfortable. My person feels safe around you, so we are really jiving. We're really good friends because you're like the same person I do. <laughs> the shepherd loves. There's a genuine connection there. There's a knowing. There's a recognition of the heart in another and that there's an awareness of, of karmic influences, of integrity. And so you understand that if you do harm to another, you do harm to yourself, and there's no desire, there's no true desire to do this, except where you're still blinded with the idea that you're a person in need of something. That's where that is distorted. But it's not your native intention anymore. You've realized beyond that. So you love. You can genuinely love and experience compassion. The mirror, again, simply is. I am you. Who is there to love? Sure, there is an experience of love, there's a witnessing of love, there's an allowance of love, there's the ability to see that the consciousness is experiencing great love, but you are one with everything, so there is a peace that transcends love. Does that make sense? Somewhat? Yes. Cool. Again, person is the small ego or the separate ego. <laughs> The shepherd is the big ego, and by that I don't mean like he has a big human ego, you know, like a, like a CEO or something, but I mean large, expanded, free, um, connected. It's an interconnected ego. It's still ego because it's still identity. It still believes or experiences itself to be one aspect of creation rather than all that is. So there is ego. As soon as there is identification with an aspect of creation and not all, there is ego. So it's the big ego, you could say. The mirror is no ego. So it depends a little bit on the 6th, 7th, and 8th um, density. But 7th density is all about going beyond individuation altogether. So this is kind of like the, it, it's mirroring the human enlightenment experience of dropping the personal ego and dropping identification with the body and dropping identification with the functioning ego. Whereas this is dropping identification with existing altogether as an individual, as a being. Does that make sense? That seventh density and, and eighth density is, because um, you could also call seventh density perhaps the universal ego, it's still ego. It's not just a big cosmic interconnected ego, it is the all that is identity. Eighth density would be the absolute one infinite perfect creator, which is beyond the creator as we know it, as God. It's beyond the ego. It's beyond beingness. <laughs> so yeah, um, as you go through your spiritual development, you will find that your expression in the world will start to shift. Where first you are a person, 
then you start to become a shepherd and more and more you start to include elements of mirroring consciousness. Now mirroring consciousness is quite rare. Um, let's see if I can give some examples. Let's say, okay, let's say you're at a party. Right? It's like a Christmas party. And uh, you're a person. Your life is kind of easy as a person because you just sit there. Everyone knows exactly what you are like. They know exactly what you're going to say. All your friends know exactly what kind of stories you tell, what your likes and dislikes are. They can categorize you easily as a person. Oh, this is what he's like. There's no mystery there. There's no enigma. You know, they joke about you behind your back because that's the way you are. You know, you're very etched in, you're very solidified. You're identified with your person, you're identified with your cloak, you're identified with your personality. There's not a lot of malleability there. So you have it easy at a party because you just sit there and you are just you, you know? I kind of envy these people sometimes. They can just be there and have one role. That's so awesome. You can just sit there and be yourself. That'd be so fun. <laughs> but you know, this whole list is why you're at the party. <laughs> because you don't want to miss out. You know, you, you want something, you want to have fun, because you, your well-being is, is dependent on what your body experiences, your senses experience. So, you know, you've sat by yourself at home for a while and you're getting bored, the person's getting bored, so it wants to have some fun. Nothing wrong with that, but that's what it wants. It wants to consume all your food. <laughs> but since it needs it, it needs things such as social validation it will bring a little bit of food itself too. it will bring a loaf of bread or <laughs> a bottle of wine because it doesn't want to show up as being imperfect it doesn't want to show up as being unwanted right it needs that social recognition so it has a fear of missing out, that's why it's at the party to begin with. <laughs> and it just takes, you know, it just takes. It starts, it starts talking and it's all about what it can get. Of course there's variations here, right? I'm, I'm making an extreme out of this. Um, there's a lot of very well-intending, loving, open-hearted people that are still predominantly operating from this state, not, without any, not with any negative intent, but that's just their state of consciousness because they're, they're identified with the body and with the small ego. That's what they've taught themselves. So I'm kind of making fun of it, but it's kind of sad at the same time. <laughs> so the, pers the person feels like it's, like it's the doer. It's just there. Like it really, it feels like it's inside of its own head. It's not aware of what's going on in the party. It's not really that aware of the group dynamics. Maybe it feels something here and there because energy penetrates, especially in this new amped up fourth density environment. So it starts to become more sensitive. So actually it starts to avoid parties a little bit more <laughs> these days. It used to be way more comfortable at parties about 20 years ago, but now the heat is rising. The person can't really survive anymore. <laughs> Again, it's identified with the body. Whatever it feels, it will respond to, react to. It, it likes, it either likes you or it doesn't. So yeah, small ego. Now, if a shepherd was to be at a party, it'd be a slightly different experience. Because they have emptied themselves out already, significantly so. And again, there's a big, big gradient there, right? So take this with a grain of salt. You have to apply this to wherever you're at. Um, but let's say that you're fairly well emptied out of an ego, a smaller ego, a personal ego, a body-bound ego. And you really do understand that you are an eternal being and you're here on a spiritual journey and you have a genuine interest at this stage to be of service to others and make a difference. You're connected, you're intuitive, um, you're empathetic. Now you go to the same party and you know, you're inspired. You feel like you can bring some light into the equation. And so your frequency is higher than perhaps the person because it's more conscious and it's more of a fathering or mothering consciousness, a shepherding consciousness. So it's not about what you can get out of the party as much as it is about generating perhaps community or generating greater sense of love throughout the party. Um, and you're inspired, so maybe you bring a fun gift or maybe you don't bring anything at all, but you just bring a good vibe. And you're creating, you're creating the party. You know, you set the stage, maybe you're the host of the party and you know, the way the furniture is, the music you're playing to whatever it is, making sure that you have what is required to generate, to source a fun, enjoyable, loving experience for people. 
And if there's anything missing, you request. There's a trust. I mean, that's maybe not so relevant for the party so much. But there's a giving, there's a creating, there's a sourcing, and there's a flow to the party. And it's about, it, again, it's about the others, at least as much as it is about you, if not more. It's about what others can experience in the presence of that party, right? And that's what excites you because that is the nature of interconnectedness and realizing that there is the rest of you over there. And since you're no longer in need, but you have the capacity to request and communicate with the universe and you know that you're fulfilled already, that satisfaction and well-being comes from within. It doesn't come from other people. It doesn't come from recognition. It comes from you. So you're sourcing it. You're resourceful. So, um, yeah, you don't need that social validation. So now your conversations are different. It, you're actually, to an extent, depending, um, this isn't necessarily a hallmark, but you are interested in other people. If not, maybe not so much in their stories, but you're interested in, again, providing the space. And so conversation is a natural extension of that because you understand that people like to talk because they're in need of that. So you provide the space and you listen and you have conversation, but there is a genuine, there's a genuine interest or desire to have them be at least okay, if not happy, right? So there's a soulfulness to it. You're not just identifying them as their bodies. There's a sense of greater awareness about who they really are, even though they can't see it. So you start sensing into the discrepancies between these two. You can see that they're identified with their brain, with their controller side, but you can see more of who they really are because you know more of who you, re who you really are. And there's love, and so it's a big ego, so it includes the whole party. Now as a mirror, things become a little complicated. <laughs> Let's say there's a party, because what is mirroring consciousness? When you're in a state of mirroring consciousness, it means you have no ego, you have no interest. Hmm? And so, what is your reason for showing up? <laughs> <laughs> you, de you detected benefit. It sounds very clinical and robotic, but it's highly intelligent and free of ego. You detected benefit. You're like, oh, you made some calculations that just sort of happened. <laughs> in the, the field of infinite intelligence, the more empty you are of a sense of self that is in need of something, the more you, your mind becomes the infinite intelligence. And you're, no, you're not even that. You're not even that, but you see it operate. You see the flow operate. You see the calculations happen. So you detect benefit, so you decide to go to the party. Um, you're allowing everything. You no longer need food and water and all that because you're not consuming. <laughs> That's not entirely true necessarily. But um, yeah, you're allowing, so you're allowing that space to be there. And for me, there is usually a combination of this um, because I do enjoy creating and inspiring. So there is that element, especially when we're talking about a party as an example. Um, but let's just stick to this mirroring consciousness for a moment. Again, there's nobody there behind the mirror. Okay? The shepherd is still mirroring people. It's holding space for people. It's mirroring their emotions and their thoughts and is able to intelligently be of service depending on what level we talk about. But there is someone behind that mirror still. There's still a center. There's still an identity that looks. It's one of those mirrors where you can see through, you know, when the FBI investigates you. You've all, ex you've all experienced that, right? <laughs> there's this little guy behind the glass, and it's transparent, and, but it reflects you, right? So there is a mirroring aspect to the shepherd, but there is still somebody behind the glass interested in what's happening interested in perhaps outcome, it's still learning things for itself, there's still an exchange that happens. In the mirroring state, there is no real exchange. I know this is hard to take for the fluffy bunny, like, yeah, but you know, you always... But there is no real exchange, depending on the severity or the totality of this mirroring consciousness being accomplished or simply being activated in that particular moment. Because you know, it can shift. It doesn't, just because you realize and penetrate this, doesn't mean you're always necessarily embodying this state. So, but say that you do embody this state at that party. You're constant, all you do, all you do is mirror. Okay, there is no intention for the party. It gets really confusing, right? But good thing you have no mind, not really. So, <laughs> so since you're mirroring everyone, now when it gets really complicated is when your friends are there, your devotees are there, your family is there and your new neighbor is there, right? Because the mirroring consciousness, when it's one-on-one, -on -one, it's totally fine on the body. It's totally fine on the system. One body can mirror another body-mind experience. 
perfectly cleanly and there's no complications. You just, you, you morph, you take on the coat and it does it by itself. It's an intelligence. So you morph yourself according to their taboos, according to their belief systems, and depending on what their higher self actually desires from their lower self, they are using your vehicles as an expression. So either you'll be really nice and accommodating and encouraging, or you'll be, um, you'll be a bit of a reflection, you know, a little bit of a trigger, as occasionally even an asshole. So one-on-one, -on -one, that's fine. But now, put one more person in the room, even to begin with. Now there's this glitch, this glitching effect. What movie is that from? It's this, uh, do, you know, do you know Mission Impossible 4 or 5, where they're like, uh, there's a bombing happening in the gremlin? In the, wait, wait, gremlin? In the gremlin. <laughs> <laughs> So the, it's, a, it's a really, it's one of the coolest scenes in movie history, I think. So they have this, um, there's this long hallway and there's this guard at the other end of the hallway. And they've, so they've got this screen with this camera behind the screen that detects the eyes. It levels with the eyes of the guard. And there's the camera in the back of it that, that uh, takes a shot of a live feed of the wall behind it and it projects it onto the screen. So from the guard's point of view, there's nobody in the hallway, but they're behind the screen because they need to get in the door that's halfway through the hallway. Right? So, um, so from the, and as soon as the guy stands up, as soon as the guard stands up, this thing follows his eyes and so it adjusts the camera behind and so he sees a perfectly straight three-dimensional hallway according to his vision. But there in the meantime, they're behind, they're in the middle of the hallway, but he can't see it. But then a second guard arises. And so suddenly they both look down the hallway and this device goes like, eh, 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 eh. <laughs> so from their point of view, suddenly the hall starts shifting. Like, <laughs> so that's, that's what you get when you add another person <laughs> in the room when there is mirroring consciousness operating. Now again, imagine, so what, what the mirror does is it has a pretty clear picture, not necessarily even deliberately or consciously with the mind, but it is so intuitive, it's so empty, that infinite intelligence is communicating with the bodies, with the mental, emotional, physical, and even spiritual body. So you literally become a living, walking channel for whatever shows up, whoever shows up, because you have no wants, no needs. Because who would have a need? You've seen through individuation enough, okay, this is hypothetical for most people, but you have enough of a penetration of that individuation to where there is no need out of any equation. So there is no real exchange, but there is still the availability of that service. And so you detect benefit, you go to the party. The problem being, again, and it's also okay if there's a group that's really aligned, you know? Let's say it's your neighbors and they've been together for three years, and, oh sorry, 30 years, and they're so attuned, you can really, you can feel your body, mind, system can feel quite comfortable in that situation, reflecting both of these people because there's a unity. You're reflecting a paradigm, a consciousness that is of a somewhat similar nature. So you don't have to split yourself up so much. So you don't have to like constantly take off your coat, put on another coat, take off your coat, put on another coat, take off your coat, put on another coat. Um, at some point, nobody knows what you want or who you are, right? So. Again, one person is easy, but imagine now that the party, uh, your party contains your friends, then it contains your parents, who don't know anything about spirituality, then it contains your devotees, who project onto you and want something from you, and then there is your new neighbors, because you just moved into your new place, and you're supposed to make a good impression. So you're all sitting around, and people are talking, and your system, your physical system goes a little haywire, because there's suddenly so much data, there's so much input, that even infinite intelligence has a hard time using your body to be effective in mirroring. And at this point, you can't get it right. You can never get it perfect. With one person, you can get it pretty much flawless. With two people or more people, especially from different demographics, concessions need to be made because there is only one body here. So it's not that the infinite intelligence is limited that can flow through you. It's not that you're wrong about the people or what you're mirroring. It's just that it all needs to funnel through one body, through one camera, and so there's this glitching effect. So now what happens, since you are a mirror, is, and this can get really, really detailed, that's why it's hard to understand for a lot of people what this is like, um, hard to relate to, but it literally goes down to the level of, um, 
let's say there's a few people that are listening to what you're sharing or you're present there and and but there is a difference in demographic and they all have different backgrounds so now this one person is looking slightly away someone maybe is asking someone else in the party is asking them something so they're slightly distracted and you sense this opening because now that person was slightly distracting what could actually come out because they weren't ready for this particular information or they didn't want to be validated in the same way as these three people and so now well, let's just use two people as an example so this other person now gets a different version of you. It's slightly upgraded, more tailored to them because he's not paying attention or she's not paying attention. So now you can be slightly different. Say that word that you couldn't say before or use the gesture or smile when you couldn't smile before because that would trigger that person in a way that wasn't necessarily beneficial. But now this person is looking back at you and so you shift slightly back. <laughs> but, you don't, but you don't shift back enough to where they feel offended unless that is the purpose of the interaction and they do need to think you're a dick. So then you do that. <laughs> Meantime, your mom is listening to the whole conversation. She doesn't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> but you sense that it's okay and that there will be an opportunity later to explain and lie slightly <laughs> as to why. Okay, this is the life of mirroring consciousness. The only... <laughs> I'm not kidding, it gets crazy. It really, really gets crazy. It gets down to the very, very details. And, but that's the only way that you can perceive of that and even be a channel for that type of interaction is because... When you're in the mirroring state, there is no you. There really, really, really is no you. There's no interest. There's no interest. There's no exchange. There's no giving and receiving. Oh, but when you give, you receive. No, there is just, just is. It just happens. It's infinite intelligence using the system. So it's like you're in a channeling state. Does that make sense? Go. Cool.